Dean McLaren is back at Manchester United. This time, he's the assistant manager alongside Mitchell van der Gag under Eric Ten Hag. And a couple of weeks ago, I covered a fascinating interview over on the McLaren's Performance podcast from Steve McLaren, where he went into some real detail and some insight into the inner workings of Eric Ten Hag. And so many of you enjoyed it, and so should. It's a fantastic interview. I want to say a big thank you to Josh again, because in today's video, I'm going to run through the latest interview with Steve. And this is from after he was made Manchester United's new assistant manager. And inside this interview, he speaks about getting the job. He speaks about what happened in those first six, seven days with the meetings behind the scenes with Murto and Ten Hag. Lots of insight in this interview. Also speaks about how happy he is to be working with Ten Hag again. Pairs into Fergie. We'll, we'll look at that. And also on the speculation of it all. It should be a fantastic and insightful video. So one, 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 one more time, sorry. I want to say thank you to Josh for letting me use this video. Follow the link in the description for the full interview. And also going to be getting Josh on the podcast next week, hopefully, to have a chat about it. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. Love to have you as part of the community. And to have you on board, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ding every time a video goes live. But let's dive straight into this one. And let's first hear from Steve on on officially getting the job because it's there was a lot of speculation going on for a long time. And this is what you had to say about that situation. Of course it is, Josh. You know, um, once you're at Manchester United and work there, it's kind of in your blood. Mm. It's kind of one of your teams. And obviously, um, the ups and downs that, that we have followed throughout the years, we've always had affection for Manchester United. And... Yeah, it was, um, as you say, the, the worst kept secret. But <laughs> but really, um, it wasn't confirmed until last week when Eric and Ajax finally won the league. Mm. And uh, then we had the meetings the day after um, he celebrated the championship. And I'll run into that second bit now, but I'll pause it there for a second. Uh, I there was a lot of speculation around that, wasn't there? About whether Steve McLaren is going to come back or not. And so there was lots of United fans, not maybe not lots, but quite a few United fans who felt it wasn't right to bring McLaren back. But I maintain it from the very start. I said if Eric Ten Hag wanted McLaren back at the club, then McLaren should be coming back to the club. But it's this bit here which I find very, very interesting because McLaren goes into a bit of detail into what happened inside that first week from Eric Ten Hag and Ajax winning the championship but what, only a, what is it, a week or so later, him being unveiled as Manchester United manager. It moved very, very quickly. And that's not something that has surprised Steve in any way, shape or form. And uh, then we had the meetings the day after um, he celebrated the championship and it was made official. And then we, uh, we basically got to work. I finished his last game. Um, he came to, to London last week where I met him and, and Mitchell and John Myrtle. And um, together, yeah, we spent five days, six days, including yesterday with the press and seven, including today. So we've spent the last week, um, like I said to you all the way along, when we've talked about Eric as a possible candidate for Manchester United, I said uh, the work ethic. Uh, the attention to detail has again just been uh, exemplified in the last seven days where he's practically met um, every member of staff who he's going to work very closely with and in detail has worked out the plan, um, what each person's job is. Um, as I say, um, you know, it's like going back back in time 10 years ago when I first met him and everything was was mapped out. Um, and but I suppose for me, it, it, it's what we all want to hear, right? Eric Ten Hag has, has not only started at Manchester United, he's not only come in early to Manchester United straight after that Ajax situation, but he's there. He's, it's something that I've been impressed with straight away. And you might, lock in, you might not look into it as much as I do, but the subtle, small touches of going and meeting all the members of staff, going into the mega store, going into the canteen, going to the reception, shaking the hand of everybody, shaking the hand of every journalist, even the people who are going to try and snake him and go behind his back. 
it, it shows the manner of the man. And as Steve speaks about in quite a bit of detail there, he's meticulous and he really has been working on this plan. So, so behind the scenes, you've, seen, you've got Ten Hag, you've got Mitchell van der Gag, Murto and McLaren, who for the last seven days really have been hashing out this, hashing out this plan. I want to describe it slightly better than that but i've been creating this detailed plan and there really is hopefully going to be no stone unturned because it really is such an important summer and such an important situation for manchester united to get this one right we know we've got to get this right and we all i suppose fear that we're not going to get it right but with so much to do this summer there was no time to waste and it's just it's unusual i suppose for united to be sit for United fans to be sitting here looking at this situation where we've actually got the manager in and we're planning things properly, meticulously, to the detail. And Eric Ten Hag, it just fills me with the optimism about what's coming forward. And to hear it from Steve, who's going to be working alongside him, even more optimism. At this point here, uh, Steve sort of speaks about you know how he's happy to be back working again with Eric Ten Hag. And again, that's the case. So... It's not just exciting going back to to Manchester United. It's exciting um, working with Eric again. Mm. And after a week with Mitchell, a very, very good coach. Um, and and hopefully together and along with the with the staff, uh, John Murto also has been a fantastic help um, in the process. We uh, we can begin middle of June. Players come back and it's a new beginning. And you know I know Eric's looking forward to it, and uh, I certainly am. And it was great to catch up with him over the last seven days, and and really bond again, and hopefully make a great team off the field that will uh, ultimately produce one on the field. Now, in terms of John Murto, he speaks about how how helpful John Murto has been throughout this whole process. I know so many of us had such doubts about whether he could step into that role and do it properly, but so much good has happened at Manchester United under his watch so far and Richard Arnold's watch that you just have to hope that this could be the turning point for the club properly. Mitchell van der Gag is an interesting uh, dynamic to all of this as well. We're not really speaking about how, how good he... I mean, McLaren there saying he's a very, very good coach. I'm not sure you can see he's a good coach yet because he's not coaching. But how confident are you in these three working together? These four, I suppose. McLaren, Van der Gag, um, Ten Hag and Murto. Where do you think the weak links are? I'd be interested to know in that. But McLaren's obviously excited to be back. He's back at Man United. And to be working with Ten Hag, clearly, it means quite a lot to Steve. And as I said, I, I quite like that part. <laughs> this part cracked me up, by the way. This is exactly the sort of thing that Sam would say to his dad. You're getting uh, being told what to do again, like ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite interesting because, yeah, then then going into into twenty, I, uh, you know, it, to be fair, it, it allowed me time to to have a look at the the full extent of the job at twenty. And it gave me that time to to focus, to watch, to listen, to take in exactly what the job is, and um, eventually find a little niche where, as the manager of the of the team and the club, I could make my impact. And I suppose the last seven days have epitomised that again. The the fact of the, the attention uh, to detail, all the detail, all the planning which he wants to get right. And, and, and that's from the day after he won the championship with Ajax. He's on to the next thing. Um, a little bit, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson um, used to do. Um, but, you know, we just want to, to support Eric and make, um, you know, him successful. And if he is, then the team is. Mm. I now, I reckon there's going to be quite a lot of um, Fergie comparisons that happen. But what McLaren... McLaren's not going to... He's not trying to do that there, but, but, but the comparisons of saying that Ten Hag, instead of sitting there celebrating on what's happened straight away, it's immediately the next day going, 
what's next. And that's what made Fergie so incredible. His ability to be excited to win the thing that he's already won and somehow keep that energy up and inside that team and inside that dressing room to win it three times in a row, three times, to win the treble. Fergie set the standards everywhere. And if there's one word, really, that you will associate with Eric Ten Hag's start so far, it's detail, meticulousness, and planning. They're the three buzzwords that really have cropped up so many times. And any person who's spoken about him, from former players to former assistant managers, now current assistant managers, anybody who's worked alongside him, they talk about his attention to detail, his obsessive nature, his planning, how meticulous he is about what he wants. And for a club that's lacked so much direction for so long, it's very exciting to have a man like that at the helm, leading the decisions, because I don't, I don't really think he's going to be too surprised by anything, because he would have planned for everything. So something's not going to, he's, I don't think there's going to be anything that comes up, because, geez, I haven't even thought about that. That's the, that's the feeling I get about Eric Ten Hag and working with Steve McLaren. And this final bit here is about, I thought this was quite an interesting uh, dynamic to hear from. McLaren was asked uh, by, by Josh about, about the speculation linking in with the Manchester United job, because obviously it went on for a long time. It's interesting to hear Steve's thoughts on that. It, the speculation's been there, and it's been very difficult because nothing has been confirmed. Mm. A lot of people were texting, congratulating, and very prematurely. As I say, it wasn't agreed until just over a week ago. Um, but then... You know, people are doing that, and and it's very difficult because you you're trying to uh, not get involved. So I basically, I just shut down. Um, you know, I just two things: Manchester United had to finish the season, and Eric had to finish his season and and win the championship again. So I, I basically just shut down. I apologise to all the people who tried to get in touch with me and. <laughs> and wanted me to comment and, and reply to, to text, but I couldn't because I couldn't confirm one way or the other. So I basically shut down, shut off uh, from the world and let it, let it play out. Mm -hmm. And it played out in the best possible way with, with Eric winning the title again, uh, us meeting with Manchester United and then, final preparations um, before it was confirmed and announced officially yesterday. What a whirlwind, what a whirlwind couple of weeks it really has been at United. From, 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 the, from the utter abject disappointment of the season ending to all of a sudden Steve McLaren's coming back to the club, you think what was going on there? That all sounded a bit odd. But yet, yeah, are, are you concerned? You let me know in the comments, ladies and gentlemen. Are you concerned of the fact that Steve McLaren wasn't as concrete and set in stone as Mitchell van der Gag was. Do you think that's a, a bit of a concern? I think there was kickback from the club, kickback from John Murto and all that uh, about you definitely want Steve in, maybe questioning his decision. Obviously allowing his decision but at the end of it, but I just find these interviews with Steve fascinating, really, to get real insight into what's gone on. And yeah, man, that it sounds like the last five, six, seven days have been mad busy. With Ten Hag, McLaren, Van der Gag, and Murto all heads down, planning properly. Now it's the 26th of May right now. The transfer window hasn't opened yet. The season technically isn't over yet. One more game to go. We won't talk about that unless Benzema bags a hat trick. Come on, Benzema. Um, but United have got to hit the ground running this summer, and we've definitely got the plans for that. I don't think any of us should be worried about United going into this summer not really knowing what we want. I think we know exactly what we want. I just don't think we'll find out about it. And maybe that's the best thing. We've talked about leaks. We've talked about everything that's been played out in public at Manchester United. I don't particularly think that's going to be the case with Eric Ten Hag. I think they're going to keep it behind closed doors. But as you can see and hear from these interviews with Steve, I don't think you have to really worry about United not having a plan. We've got that plan. And he's been meticulously planning for what's coming next. And I tell you what, man, I'm dead excited about it. And fingers crossed it works out with Steve as well. Fingers crossed it works out with Mitchell. And we've got the right people there. Then we're going to get one more first team coaching. Probably somebody who works specifically on the training ground. We'll find out about that over the next few weeks. One more time, I want to say a big thank you to Josh and to the McLaren Performance Podcast for letting me use 
these interviews inside here. I'm looking forward to bringing him on. Make sure you follow the link in the description. Go down and watch the full interview with Steve. There's much more in there than, the, than what I've covered. But big up to all of you who watched it. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Why not? It won't take you two seconds now. And subscribe if you're new. How excited are you about the plans and Ten Hag? I'm dead excited.